I just start taping because um, if I fuss with it too much, it goes pew, and it turns off again. And I'm like, uh, and when an executive is like hanging out, it's a little awkward to be like, I got the, I got the bitty version. Yeah. I'm still, my starting to wear it. That's how much I've used mine. Seems good to me. Good enough for our shoot. So, it's John Reen and Jim Spath doing the ecologically correct outdoor video shoot. We're on location at the Rosen Inn Human Resources patio. So do you think this is safe to say this is the last ASUG Sapphire video shoot that's happening? Um, unless I do one by myself tomorrow on the way to the airport, yeah, probably. Potentially, the lab, we're going to have the final word. So, I really feel like what I want to talk about with you is the ASUG side because if someone says, are you going to Sapphire 2011, you say, no, I'm going to ASUG 2011. So what was the ASUG experience like this week? Well, Sunday we're pre-conference, and from what I understand, it was a complete sellout. I don't know if we've done that every year, but I've never heard that before. Um, so there was a lot of interest in full-day sessions, deep dives on topics. As usual, in an event like this, there's always attendees who have never been to it. Um, Buddy Dip from, from India, first first time. Somnath, first time. Uh, met, met several other people at first first time. They're just overwhelmed. Uh, Jamie Oswald, just never have been to anything so huge. And, and you know, they've been to Tech Ed, which is large, and, and for a couple of days, but um, this has even more. The nicest comment I heard was, yeah, I got to see what real customers are doing, what users are doing, and it wasn't just sales pitch after sales pitch. So what about your own personal experience? Did you learn what you were set out to? Because you always need to take stuff home for your team. That's why you go. So did you learn what you needed to? Um, yeah, yes, and the idea is you come with a pre-programmed set of expectations, sessions that you want to get to. Um, but also with the knowledge, the understanding that you're going to meet people that you don't know about, you're going to be introduced to people that might have something interesting for you, and I think I hit both goals, the sessions on upgrades and comparing databases were um, what, what I need to, to talk to my teams about. The, I think, bonus, what I didn't expect was a lot more about business objects the community itself, and I've known many of the people who came from the business object side of the house, as they say, and are now ASEG members by, you know, by choice or by default. Um, Greg Myers and I have hit it off really well. He lives close by to me, so you know we communicated a lot. I spent more time with more of them, including a tweet up the other night, and my old friend Jeff Dooley has now joined that group, as it were, because that's what his job role is. And the takeaway today, which is in blog I put on, on SDN, was that those business object savvy people want to use their skills to help with managing some of what we do in ASA. So we've got lists of contacts that go back 10 years and they've never been purged. So we're going to try to use some applied intelligence to um, improve our contact list. I saw that. I saw a guy on the website that had thousands of, uh, of blogs, and it was actually not a real person. It was something. Is that the kind of stuff that might get addressed from something like this? Or? Um, no, not that exactly. Um, okay. So you go onto ASUC, and you can say, I'm, I'm interested in um, archiving, right? You may or may not be, but you might check, check all the buttons. Right. Well, after years and years, the, those number of members goes to... Right. Uh, one, one, one chapter was 1,400, I think I quoted, but my special interest group on mobile is over 10,000 names and I don't know how many of them are still at that address. I don't know how many of them really meant to, to click that button. Um, so that's the kind of data purge that um, you know we, we need to do. Now we've got people that are interested in doing it and have the tools and have the skill set to do it. We need to protect data privacy so we're not giving away you know, this, this confidential information. Um, but also this year we scanned people coming into the, the sessions. That's the first time we've gotten that technology. Other, other conferences, they've done that. We've done that for, for hands-on and for some other sessions, but you know, 
build. Underlying technology has changed, so if people come to a business object or some other topic and we might have something at a Florida chapter meeting, we want to be able to say, hey, come back and, and get, get that content at, at, at this event. So in the keynotes, Hana really took center stage from the, the Sapphire perspective and uh, the speed. We heard a lot about speed. We heard a lot about game-changing technology. I want to ask you, from, from, a, from an ASO perspective, from your ASO perspective, uh, are you optimistic, interested, irrelevant, cynical? What is your view? Um, are you being a lawyer and you know the answer to the question already? or? I don't know the answer. I have an idea of what you're going to say, but, okay. you know, we're live, you know. I don't know what it's going to come out of Jim Spath's mouth. Who does? Sure, sure. Well, I, I've been cynical about new technologies that are unproven because my role, in a way, is to be as pessimistic as possible about any technology because that's what protects data and services because you not only imagine what can go wrong, but you know what can go wrong. You've done the tests, you've done you know, the real world experience, so you know what can fail, how it can fail, and what the mitigation factors are. So some kind of new technology that's come out that is to, still to me experimental um, is not where I want to be you know, supporting. If it is a game changer or a um, you know, killer app, is obvious, then I need to learn enough to be able to install that, protect that, back it up, and all that from an infrastructure side. I don't think Hana's anywhere near that. The, the inside information that I've gotten from other customers who are really interested in it for specific applications are not happy with the speed of deployment, the, the development toolkits that's there, and I'll take a back seat and just wait. I, I may be retired by the time it becomes productive enough to, to matter. I, I, while analytics and reporting is important, it's not the most important thing in the you know, business world. Selling and delivering are, are, are way up there. And I know that other, other people will have difference of opinion. But I didn't know what you were going to say, but that was, uh, that was, good. That was good for the, the viewers, a little contrast. Uh, and there was definitely confusion because I had reporters ask me, wait, uh, you, you mean that the customers featured in that video aren't produ in production yet? And so <laughs> I had to explain to them, well, actually, many of them are still in the proof of concept uh, phase. It's just a little bit different. Uh, so anyway, we'll see what SAP can do there. One final question I have to ask you. You've been uh, a significant voice in terms of making ASUC Sapphire a more sustainable event as an event. Well, what's your take on that this year compared to past years? Okay. Um, as Marilyn Pratt likes to say, I was one of the um, drivers in, in removing disposable water bottles from the, um, the delivery supply chain or the food service. So that's become kind of a normal part of the, the contract. They'll have the bottled water stations, you know, large bottles, or you know, like me, just go to the tap and fill it up. Um, this year, for the first time in several, they've allowed the, the bicycle taxis on site. Petty cab. Uh, yeah, man, the, the, the ready petty. Um, had 20 guys and, and girls out there um, pedaling up to 16, 17, 18 hours a day. Um, you gotta, gotta give them credit for that, um, moving people around. Faster rides, less fuel, what's not to like, right? Right. right. Um, so kudos to SAP for finally turning the corner on that. Yep, yep, and, and, and I wish I could tell you Julie's name, but I don't know who she is that, that said that was okay. Um, on a more professional business level, I managed to talk to Jeremiah Stone of SAP in the sustainability area. Which I've heard, heard him on webcast, talked to him on the phone, had email conversations with him. Um, I'm a moderator on the sustainability forum on SDM, so I'm, I'm very interested in the topic. And he introduced me to many people on the team as an improved customer explanation, customer-based explanation of what the tool set that, that SAP's got, and we, we got, came away with some good ideas. I think there are some areas, such as getting topics for SAP Tech Ed, that, that we can pursue. Um, 
I think SAP's got some good products there. I think the community is very small. The, the people actually that I searched for that I met aren't SCN contributors. I couldn't find them and I think we need to turn that around so that they become community presence and that can only have positive feedback to SAP. So I guess the final word for the SAP sustainability team is start blogging. We'll read. So get it going. Yep. Wiki. Post on the forums. And uh, you know, become, become known in the community. Well, let's wrap it up so we can get some Ethiopian food. Check. Thanks, Jim. Okay, thanks, John.